Next up, we have flex wrap, and we are going to be working with giving these elements widths and what happens when there uh, is there's too much space and they go wider than they should be. Now, one thing I want you to do right now is take your existing knowledge of floats, and when you run out of space, it just breaks onto the next line. Um, take that and kind of just throw it out for a second because uh, the nature of Flexbox is that it's flexible and it's a, actually like a little bit more forgiving than uh, when you have regular old floats. So uh, what we're going to do right here is that um, we've got this container here, the display flex on it, and I'm going to go ahead and select each of these individual boxes. Now, uh, if you remember back to video one, we called this a flex container and then this was called the what? the flex item. Now, I really hope that you just answered there. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and select the flex item uh, and we can go ahead and give it a width, let's say like 300 PX, give it a save and refresh and whoa. So I just gave each box a width of 300 pixels and uh, 10 boxes times 30 pixels, sorry, 300 pixels each. What that means is that it's 3000 pixels. Clearly my screen is not 3000 pixels wide. So, and I'm not actually scrolling um, side to side. So this is kind of cool. The The nature of Flexbox is that it's gonna try to work with the widths that you give it, but if it just doesn't work out, it's just going to, uh, first of all, evenly distribute it throughout the children, or we're gonna learn about uh, Flex, the actual Flex property in a future video where you can sort of assign more and less to other ones. So. That's where flex wrap comes in. Again, this is a property that we don't put on the flex item. We put it on the flex container uh, and we will say flex wrap. And by default, it's no wrap, which is just one word. There's no dash in it like some other stuff in CSS. It's just the word no wrap. If you save that and refresh, you'll see nothing happen. So again, you won't need that one unless you actually turn it off. But we also have wrap and we will talk about wrap.reverse. So if I say flex wrap wrap and refresh, Whoa, look what happens there. A um, couple things to note here. It actually works with the 300 pixel now. So we get one, two, three. We get three of them in before we run out of space and it breaks onto the next line. Uh, so that's sort of important. We'll, we'll figure out how we can get rid of that in a second. Uh, and then the other thing is that, like look at the height of them. We didn't give these a height, but if you remember back to before we wrapped them, how high were each of them? they were as high as the actual container could be. So by default, flex items will try to stretch their way across uh, their container. And of course, that's because I've put a, a height on here. If I didn't have that, they would just uh, be like that. And when we turn the wrap on, it sort of says, okay, so we need to stretch across our container, but we also need to like split it up between the 10 of us. So uh, what happens here is that the browser figures out that, okay, we need four rows here and we have, we're just going to split it amongst each other. So uh, you'll notice that the height of these is a little bit higher than it needs to be. It only really needs to be about as high as this number one here, plus some padding on either side. Uh, and then I'll just kind of stretch across and fit it to the other ones. Now, one thing I want to note here is that, uh, my items are going from left to right because I'm uh, I speak English and I have an English browser that's set to English. Uh, however, if I was in a, writing a language where it went from right to left, some some languages read from right to left, then they would be switched on the other side. So again, let's talk about our axes. Our main axis goes from left to right, and our cross axis goes from top to bottom. However, if I change this wrap from wrap dash reverse and refresh it. What happens is, remember before when we did flex direction, our cross axis from left to right to right to left. When we change our flex wrap, the wrap, the cross axis, which goes top to bottom in this case, instead of going from top to bottom, it goes from bottom to top. So I just did a quick, re, a quick swap of that, and my items are still starting at the left hand side because my main axis just starts from left to right, but they start at the bottom and go on up. So I don't know, that's not something you probably will uh, come across super often. Not likely you want to reverse your items, but if you have it, you've got it. So it's going to bring that back to wrap.
give it a refresh. Uh, and I want to talk about filling in the space. So this works similar to every other box model in that you can use 33.33333% and give it a refresh and your items will go from one to three, one to three, one to three. Cool. What happens if I change my flex direction to column? Remember by default it is row. We're going to change it to column and give it a refresh. Whoa, what happened there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So what actually happened there, never mind this white space, we'll learn about that in a future video, is that because we have this height 100 VH set on it, again, the, the height is just this kind of goldenrod border across, it reaches the bottom here, it can no longer fit in an eighth one. It says, I'm out of space, I need to uh, wrap around vertically because we switched the main axis from going from left to right, which means that it would wrap from left to right. And now it hits the bottom and it's going to wrap again from the top there. If we took this height or in some of the other videos, I had a min height on there and refreshed, it goes all the way down. How come? Because it never hits the ability to, it never needs to wrap because uh, if we keep scrolling, we've got all the space that we could want. We could add a hundred items and we'd be able to uh, scroll from top to bottom. One last thing is if I change this back to flex direction row, or if I just take it off entirely, since that's the default, and I go to the box and add just a margin of, let's say, 10px and give it a refresh, what happens is that we it breaks. So uh, you may be familiar from this from your normal uh, float space layout in that uh, margin is not part of the box model, which means that um, when I give it a width of 33% plus 10px, that means I'm over budget. It's 33% plus 10px on either side plus 10px on either side. It's going to break on to the other side. So uh, if you really wanted to, to do that, you could do something like calc. That's a new thing in CSS. You could set the width to 33.3% minus 20 pixels because it's 10% 10px on each side. Uh, and then that will actually go ahead and uh, resize it to 33% minus the margin that you needed. Um, if I change that back, back to margin, it's broken. But if I use padding here, you see that it's fixed now. That's because padding, I use the box sizing border box. Padding and border, 10px solid misty rose. Padding is and border are part of the box model, whereas margin is not. So uh, just something to keep in mind if you're ever having a break. That's it for this video. In the next one, we're going to take a look at reordering items in Flexbox, which is something that instead of just putting all our Flex properties on the Flex wrapper, uh, we are going to go on the Flex uh, item instead. <laughs>